Waco, Texas. Whenever I see the name Waco pop up in the news, I sense something big is coming. Years ago, when a small church community fell into bitter conflict with federal and local government officials, it would blossom into the nightshade of death. We remember it as Branch Davidian, when men, women, and children perished in a maelstrom of fire. It reminded me of the MOVE massacre of May 13, 1985, just marking its 30-year anniversary. And it also reminds me of the recent bust of over 170 bikers involved in the crazy violence at a Waco's Twin Peaks restaurant recently. When Bond was set at $1 million for each defendant, or $170 million total, I felt it even more. Branch Davidian, move, and now these bikers had something in common. All had been demonized. If 170 armed bikers were equally involved in the violence, there would have been more, far more, than nine people dead. But it is a big case and careers are made and grown. Already, Waco officials are salivating for the death penalty. But McLennan County, Texas, ain't Manhattan. Trial costs will undoubtedly skyrocket. And that ain't even counting defense counsel for 170 men, many of whom will have antagonistic defenses or bikers flipping on other bikers. Soon, when the fires cool, when passions die down, when some officials begin looking at county budgets, perhaps sanity will prevail. They may be banditos, but they ain't demons. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Yeah, black sun in the hizzle, all oh, the shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I'm going to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or affiliates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. And the views of White Sun does not reflect that of anybody with White Sun, White Power. Everybody with that. White Power? Okay. I want to introduce... Oh man, is, oh man, I gotta sit back because the lights are kind of low here in the studio. Let me bring this table. Down. Just kind of pick up the table and just bring it over. Bitch. Okay, yeah, because that lighting is kind of dark. All right, it's very dark, man. To my right, I want to introduce Ralphie. Well, I'm, I'm Ralph Rice. I'm here to represent the bike community. And I, I think this show is about some things that are happening in the world about bikes. Today's right. Hi, I'm Dawn. Um, I'm a local activist here in Atlanta. I am Gidon Ben Yasharal, a servant of the Creator Yah and his anointed son, Yeshua. Hello, Arena. My name is Vincent Cheeks, actor, activist, also known as Ghetto Messiah. Okay, thank you everybody for being here. This wonderful panel, Rafi. Appreciate you representing uh, the bikers. I have a few announcements before we get started. Okay, this Wednesday night, Elegance Restaurant and Lounge, Stone Mountain, Georgia. On the east side, come out and join Universal Possibilities uh, for a night of fun, a night of live music, independent artists, um, all night long. Artists, you can come out, sign up and perform, <clears throat> or if you're not a performer, come out and just enjoy the show. Shout out to my man, uh, Struck Supreme, DJ Culinary, also Tanya from Universal Possibilities. Then Friday night, June 12th, at the Masquerade, we have the Hustler Spirit Showcase. Hustler Spirit Showcase. If you have the spirit of a hustler, make sure you get to the Masquerade, June 12th, 7 p.m. Uh, man, it's going to be a live show out there. The Masquerade is one of Atlanta's premier venues. So it should be a great show. Shout out to Stroke Supreme, DJ Culinary, all the Universal Possibilities artists. And then lastly, June 22nd, 
<clears throat> we have the Hot Block Awards. You might have heard me mention this on Mother's Day. Hot Block Awards show, the eighth annual one, coming up June 22nd at the Crow's Nest on the South Side. Your man, your host, Ghetto Messiah, has been nominated for Hottest Club Host of the Year in the right. ATL. That's so right. make sure make sure you go to hotblockmagazine.com and vote for your boy, Ghetto Messiah. Appreciate you ahead of time. Shout out to Michael Myers, Shy Dirty Entertainment from the Crow's Nest, man. One love. Okay, let's get down to business. Shootout at the Twin Peaks. Shootout in Waco, Texas. Shootout in yeah. Waco. You already know. That's what they say. Yeah. So, so who, make sure you iris that because I look real dark on that camera. Yeah, I look like Darth Vader. It, it is He's Black Sun. <laughs> I don't want to give it Black Sun. Give you no opportunity to coon on the panel. Oh. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> iris it up. All right, let's get to it. Let's All right. It. Shootout at Twin Peaks. As you may or may not know, this happened on May 17th. Camera, camera, we need, we need, we need camera. We need okay. somebody, not to crash the plane. <laughs> Don't crash. Andreas. Okay. Andreas from Dusseldorf, do not crash the plane. <laughs> okay. okay. Shoot out at the Twin Peaks, as you may or may not know. May 17th, 2015, Waco, Texas. There was a huge what they are calling a biker gang shootout between the Banditos and the Cossacks. Uh, the Banditos have been around basically since 1966 is when they were founded and they're pretty much run Texas. They pretty much run Texas as far as the biker clubs okay, go. Okay, okay. Um, and they were having a meeting at Twin Peaks restaurant uh, the meeting was the actual, it was the annual Texas, Co Texas Confederation of Clubs and Independence, which is the Regional Biker Club Coalition for okay. Texas. So, uh, with a bunch of biker gangs going there, but the Banditos, supposedly, according to what I've researched, mm -hmm. the Banditos supposedly invited the Cossacks to come to this meeting under the guise of peace okay. and trying to, you know, uh, men their their beef. Okay. And what happens from there is not really we're not really sure on everything that went down but from what I researched it started in the parking lot the Cossacks got there first and they were all on the patio they said and then about a hundred banditos rolled up. As the, bo as the banditos were pulling in and parking all their hundred bikes there was a Cossack outside of the restaurant, and apparently the bandito ran, bumped into him with his motorcycle, and that started a fist fight between those two, the bandito and the Cossack. And the fist fight quickly escalated into a bullet into the head of the Cossack. Oh, man. Once the bullet started flying, then it became a he said, she said, they said, this happened. Right. Because... The Cossacks are saying the Banditos started it. The Banditos are saying the Cossacks started it. The cops are saying both biker gangs started it. The Banditos are saying the cops started it. So now it's a big finger point in melee. Uh, what ended up happening was there were nine people killed. Mm -hmm. Seven of them were Cossacks. 18 were injured and roughly 177 people were arrested. Mm -hmm. Those who were arrested <clears throat> were given a million dollar bond. Oh. Million dollar bond. Uh, because apparently the judge said that the banditos have a reputation for being a violent biker gang and that they needed to set the bond so high as to protect the members of the community. And to this day, the majority of those people are still in jail. Wow. Uh, I believe they said maybe, let us see, 53 bonded out, and three had bonded out when the bill was a million dollars. And then the, the bill apparently got reduced and 53 more bonded out. And so now today, uh, it should be wrapping up as we speak, the Banditos and a bunch of other biker clubs in Texas, they had a protest at the mm -hmm. McLennan Courthouse, right. the McLennan County Courthouse. Um, 
They pulled up wearing shirts saying, I am not in a gang. I'm not a criminal. Um, John Bostick, who J, who's age 62, said Sunday's protest to re, is to reinforce that motorcyclists are not criminals. Okay. So you have the media, you have the police officers saying that the banditos and the Cossacks and all these other biker clubs are really gangs. Right. And the biker clubs are saying we're not gangs, we're just a family club. And so there's this just a family club back that and forth. guns and have shootouts. And right, a lot here. right, basically. So there's this big, uh, I guess, debate on whether these motorcycle clubs slash gangs are really motorcycle clubs or gangs. And so we got Ralphie here today. Ralphie, can you please give us a little that, insight that, okay, on there are some motorcycle, motorcycle clubs and there are some motorcycle gangs? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it's so simple what happened at Twin Peaks where people, you, you're not even going to conceive of why this happened. It happened because of the word Texas on the bottom of that vest. The bottom rocker. The mm -hmm. bottom rocker. That's yeah. where it happens. Okay. The but banditos say no other <clears throat> clubs in Texas can wear Texas. Right. Because they own Texas. Wow. They own another Texas. club put on that word Texas, Texas. Or, or Georgia or California. That's right. There's a conflict there. Mm. Okay, right. and that conflict is over territory. Mm -hmm. Okay, now okay. if that if that uh, Cossacks had put Austin or uh, Dallas or something like that, Ben Diaz would not have a problem. But the word Texas, but it's Texas still. is is a problem. The word. Just one word, mm -hmm. that bottom rock. So it's not so state. much the, the, the city, but the whole state. The, the state. whole state. The bandidos said, bandido said they own the whole state. Right. So cause no one can use the word Texas but them. Mm -hmm. That's their philosophy. And when there is someone else does that, there's a conflict. But Austin doesn't count? No. Austin's part of Texas. I know, but you can, no, do, a, you can the, do a city. It's the wording, right. It's, it's, you can so do the, a city. So it's the word. You cannot do it. They, they say that it's improper to do a state, but who make the rules? Right. Now, but they try to and, enforce a rule that they came about. Right, and the thing <laughs> that with the banditos is th apparently they've been repping Texas since they started in 1966, okay. and the Cossacks is basically a new gang. Mm -hmm. Not only are... I'm sorry, I don't want to call them gangs because they say they say they're not a gang. But the uh Cossacks are basically a new club in Texas. And not only are they a new club in Texas, but they're also backed by uh the Bandito's biggest rivalry. You know who that is, Rafa? Like I figured you would oh, know that, Rafa. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was going to say the Mongols. Wait a minute. I, I, no, the, no. the Hells Angels is the largest small soccer club in the world. And the Banditos I, are the second I, largest. I, I got thought rap too. the feds took down the Hells Angels, and that's why a lot of people did an exodus, too. No. There are always exodus, but the Hells Angels are the biggest. Like you said, the Banditos are the second. And right here in the, on the East Coast, outlaws. the Outlaws. Yeah. Okay. And right now, the outlaws <laughs> and the Hells Angels have a problem in Florida because of that same thing, right. that Bob Rocker, that not, they don't want to say Florida. So wow. the outlaws control Georgia because I see a lot of outlaws here. But, but when you say control, well, I mean, right. I mean they, uh, Georgia patch. They well, control. a Georgia patch, but, you know, if you want to uh, well, be a member of another club, are you going to let another club control you? No, Make you, know, you got a lot of nigger biker gangs out here, so I can't imagine what exactly. no kind of conflict. But, but black bike clubs and white black clubs are just totally two different animals. You, think, you cannot wow. even compare them. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Ralphie, now you know I got to show this clip of one of the Cossacks. They call them Half Face. <laughs> yeah, sure. Half Face? Yeah, they call them Half Face. Let's go to Half Face here on the screen. Cause he's talking about a white and black thing, and I wanted to just bring this up. Half face. Half, there goes half face. Oh. He looked like a nigger to me. That's the one that he be the ex cop. That's the one that be the ex cop. Yeah, but it, it was only it was only two black people in the game. Well, okay. I, I mean, all the people in the why club. Why show the brothers? Well, you know I think exactly. I think I think playing devil's advocate. Play devil. Okay, play the devil. Let's go. I think he's being uh, featured more prominent because one, he is an ex-cop. Two, 
he was driving, he was a school bus driver okay. when this went down. So being that he's an ex-cop that is now affiliated with what they're calling a gang, that's big, that's a big headline. Yeah, but just, a lot just of them are ex-veterans. So a lot of them doing, are ex-veterans, yeah, but being an ex-veteran and being an ex-cop is two totally different things. One is serving the country, one is supposed to be serving the community and, and you know, uh, backing, backing the laws, which the banditos are called the banditos because they represent outlaw. being an outlaw. True. You know what I mean? True. And so True. how you, he that. served, he served uh, 30, 30 some years as a cop. As a detective. Yeah, as a detective, right. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then once he retired, he, he joined the, the banditos. So I think that's okay. one of the reasons they're highlighting but, but let's so much. Discuss the word outlaw. Mm. Okay. Sometimes we cannot communicate because we have different definitions of the same. Word. Right. I exactly. agree. Right. I agree. Okay. That's true. And the term outlaw in the biker culture, a lot of us might use that term, but we perpetrate it. The term outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> but the term outlaw as a group means that I'm getting the bulk of my income from illegal sources. Exactly. Right. And most of us in all these bike clubs go to work on Monday morning, mm -hmm. get that bill from Georgia Power, mm -hmm. have to pay up more and everything else. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the term outlaw, a lot of us might gravitate to that term, but we are not playing the role. You know, we're not even wearing the uniform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. To the point you just made, Ralphie, which was a very good point. Mm -hmm. And, and you do have to specify when it comes to these terms and definitions and stuff like that. Now, on May 1st, 2014, the Texas Department of Public Safety issued an advisory to all law enforcement agencies that said um, that the banditos were basically a, a pretty bad, violent oh. gang, okay? It said it listed the banditos as a tier two threat, which is the same as the Crips, the Bloods, and the Aryan Brotherhood. What's oh. sorry? Okay, go ahead. The assessment said the banditos conduct their illegal activities as covertly as possible and avoid high profile activities such as drive bys that many street gangs tend to commit. So he's basically saying that all this stuff they're saying the banditos murder. Uh, heavy drug trafficking, stealing motorcycles, prostitutes, all of that. Is the, the law enforcement agencies are saying the banditos are doing this on a regular basis. Like this is their everyday lifestyle. So this is their main source of income. This is their main source of income, which, back to your point over uh, this starting over turf, mm -hmm. what do you need turf for? If not to peddle drugs, stolen goods, and the like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I have a couple questions, actually. Um, it's something that Ralph said earlier about control. When they're controlling, an, you know, when they control an area, when they are over an area, what exactly does that mean? That means that no one, I'm going to use the term outlaw, no one can peddle their business in that territory. Uh, mm -hmm. as, um, what, what business? business? <laughs> <laughs> what business? Hold on, and what that, business would that be? Illegal <laughs> business in that, in that sense. Okay. But there are some other clubs that try to use that moniker that people cannot wear that bottle rocker just because it's a bottle rocker. It's not about tourism. It's about uh, power. Uh, pride, right. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that, there are some clubs, even in our community, that says that certain clubs can't wear Georgia or certain clubs can't wear Florida. But no one pay up no attention. But <laughs> that sounds like gang activity. Uh -huh. I got this on my jacket, on the bottom of my jacket, my, my bottom rocker that says where I'm representing. One of the things they were supposed to be discussing at this meeting, which was deemed a political meeting, you know, they were supposed to be going to fight for the rights of motorcyclists, the political politics, rights. Gideon, politics, right, the political rights of uh. motorcyclists. But um, if I come out of nowhere, because they said most of the people weren't from Waco, from the Waco area. Mm -hmm. So if I come from Florida and I got on a, a biker jacket, I can't have Texas across the, my bottom rocker because of... The banditos say you cannot. That sounds like a game. That's a game. So, 
So you're saying there is a distinct difference between the motorcycle gangs and the and the motorcycle no, clubs? No, okay. So some of some of the rules and regulations that we get that that gangs came about. Let me see. After World War One, after World War Two, uh-huh. a lot of veterans came back to came back to the states <laughs> and wanted to have some. Some people they want to attach to other veterans, right? And and bike clubs came out <clears throat> of the military mentality, right? Right. But they escalated into what society is all about. You will find everything in the, in the bike clubs, like I said before, that you will find everywhere else in society. <clears throat> you will find people that are upstanding citizens. Mm-hmm. You find middle class citizens, right? And you're gonna find some scum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In every organization, or just, it's just like a family. It's like they are families. <laughs> and I use the word scum. I, I might not need to use that word. Right. But a, a person of low character. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, you know, I was just scum, like, how is a low character better yeah, than okay. scum? <laughs> okay. And well, when we talk about black bike clubs, we looked at those other white clubs and we patterned ourselves after them mm. as a as a group. White power. Okay. Exactly. We patterned <laughs> themselves because that's where we got it from. That's all. Mm-hmm. That's the only person so we can't pattern ourselves after. Wait a but, minute. But, Hold on, Ralphie. You mean to tell as, me as far as bikers are concerned? There weren't black bikers back in the fifties. But but not as mm, an organization. Not in the fifties. Okay. Yeah. There were bikers, but there, there was no black organizations. Mm-hmm. Oh. There was no black clubs. Okay. Now, when, again, when you talk about the police, talk about the bloods and the crips and the stuff, mm-hmm. the police look at all of us like that. Mm-hmm. Every mm-hmm. one of us, That's they look at it like that. That's right. right here in Atlanta, there are proper 100 bike clubs. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know okay. that. And at the police... I'm sisters, too. Okay, yeah. And at the police department downtown, all of us are outlaws. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All of us are outlaws. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> What's the name of your motorcycle club? I ride with the Strikers. The Strikers? Uh-huh. On Memorial, oh, yeah. Memorial Avenue. Yep, Memorial Avenue. Okay. And the we've Strikers. been in existence ever since 1978 or 79. Okay. Like and what's the size of the We've got about 100, 100 members. 100 wow. members? Uh-huh. Okay. So you being a biker, you just stated that when a lot of the black biker clubs started, you based it off of the white clubs. From right? an organization From an organization standpoint, okay, yeah. right. Uh-huh. So my question to you is, as a member of a motorcycle club, when you first heard this story about the banditos and the Cossacks and the shootings, what was your first thought? Again, just territory. Uh, I, I, the first, my first thought was that Bob Rocker. That Bob, you know it's the Bob Rocker. You know it's the Bob Rocker. It's about Bob Rocker. Oh, and, so and, and, and again, a lot of our black clubs try to perpetrate that bottle rock also. So, we, we do, and that and that just saying that you are the most powerful organization a bike club in that area. Huh. Well, this is the thing I struggle with from the research that I did because a lot of the banditos that got arrested, their families are up in arms. You know, their children, their mother, they're up in arms like. My dad or my uncle or whatever, he's not in a gang. This is a family club, and we do charitable work, and this, that, and that. As a matter of fact, prior to the Twin Peaks shootout, it's rumored that a lot of this started because the Banditos beat the Cossacks at a Toys for Tots event (laughs) in December of 2014. I laughed, too, when I read it. I oh said, I said, <laughs> at a Tours for Tots event. So, That's serious. So, this is, so they're initially saying that it started from this Tours for Tots event where the Banditos beat the Cossacks. And then a week later, one of the Cossacks was killed in Fort Worth, Texas. And so from there, the little skirmishes and the little arguing and stuff has been escalating and escalating until... Um, the president of the North Texas Cossacks, he was an eyewitness for the shooting. He's one that I guess didn't get arrested. Um, 
he's the one that said they don't have a name for it. They just said he's an eyewitness who's the president of the North Texas Cossacks. He said that they were invited to the meeting by the banditos under the guise of peace. He said, but when they got there and the 100 banditos arrived and they struck the dude in the parking lot, he said he felt like it was a setup. Yeah, that's he felt what it like they like were being set up. That's what it sounded like. Because they were this new um, biker club. Right. They were coming into the banditos' territory. Well, Vince, and not what's your take on it? I mean, I'm reading that. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking set up. The way you, the way you so read it. I'm, I'm thinking set up. And, and the bike coast, they should, they should have known. I think they should have known. The, 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 the Cossacks should have known? The should have known that, that not to meet with the banditos in that situation. Now, but, oh. again, uh, whenever... But don't you have to negotiate peace at some point in time? Okay. Yeah. That, 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 it, it's not going to be peace because we're talking about territory. We're talking about territory. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're fighting okay. over land. Okay. Land now, ain't even yours. Now, you, you, yeah. you, 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 look, you look at South Central LA, you have the Bloods and the Crips. Right. Right there when they meet. That part going to be in conflict at all times. All times. You ain't got nothing in. Unless... unless there's some type of police brutality that overrides that. Every yes. time we have the Crips and Bloods come together, it's over because the police have done some brutalized violence. us so bad. <laughs> right. like, no, we okay. need to come Baltimore together. Baltimore so, specifically. Yeah, not only Baltimore, but the Rodney King. So we've had totally. numerous truce. Fought, and thank you, LAPD, because, yeah, you, you mm -hmm. it causes us to have many uh, truces. Now, I want to speak to another gang member, Gideon. You part of the Hebrew gang. Yeah, got me calling him gang. Right, right, right. Elder brother, sir. Right, he's part of the Bible. He's been very educated. Ralphie's intelligence, his ability to articulate, has really enthralled me. What I think about the wacky Waco melee as it pertains to the information that's been revealed, referencing territory. It really uh, epitomizes the uh, destructive nature of the European and the programming of our people as it pertains to fighting for land. Land like is just, not ours. That, that's not even ours. Right. But it also reflects the mentality. Well, you don't get in that money, Lars. That goddamn. Well, the money ain't even got your picture on it. Oh. <laughs> it ain't well. worth it. Preach. Buy me some of my picture on it. Wow. <laughs> So the, the point is, when what I look at is not only we reckon the uh, original bikers were uh, defined as these people who love freedom, they were rebels, and, and that rebel mentality grew out of the American culture and right. ideology. It was about referencing your power and uh, being a daredevil because speed was also associated. But when I bring it to modern times, it makes me reflect upon how our people are treated when we use our so-called political power and by law we assemble peacefully as our so-called political rights allows us to do. Our children come out and what do the system at large do? They call out the police with militarized equipment mm -hmm. They call out the National Guard right. with militarized equipment. They not only threaten to kill our children, they do kill. Yes. But when these real killers come out and they are organized and they confiscate over a thousand weapons, even after nine people killed, yeah, 150 injured, and the number of 120, however many, incarcerated. What did the police do? They sit around and play pity pat and smoke cigarettes <laughs> with those brothers yes. of theirs. Wait a minute and now, they don't use any of the equipment. I got to object, Gideon. Well, object, sir. Oh. A lot of those guys are facing a death penalty. Wow. Well, that may be true now, but the point is when you parallel how our people were treated, when they were given lawful assembly and lawful rights to protest, they were met with military equipment and the military. Yeah. 
when these real killers came out there and mm. actually threatened the lives of the local populace, right. the people that were around and killed several people, right. they mm. did nothing. And then they said they were going to target the police. They said they were going to have an assembly of bikers come back to Waco, and they still haven't called for legislation for an outcry that these scum... No National these, Guard. No National <laughs> Guard. No, because you know what? These people are ex-military. They really, they are part of the, what can we call the militia that is going, that these white folks know are going to rise up against this government and they wanted to quell that situation rather than escalate. But when it comes to us, they don't de-escalate, they escalate. So we're waiting. See, ultimately, these killers are going to kill each other. That's what the, that, and, but they're like, pit bulls <laughs> and unfortunately I'm going to have to have a pit bull put down myself because killing is in them right. and they're not going <laughs> to stop killing it's just when they meet a force that equal to their own force and they're just as uh, barbaric as they are like you've always said what stops oh. the American military from killing other nations they have nuclear armament well when these killers came up against other killers they backed down well, Gideon, I, I kind of, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I think that something that I've been concerned about as I've been watching the news, I've been looking to see sort of how are they portraying, you know, the banditos and the Cossacks versus how they typically, you know, portray our folks right. in the media. Um, I will say that I have been to national protests. I've been to places where they've had one of those long range audio devices, which emits a very loud piercing streak that can sometimes cause uh, nausea. Mm -hmm. But these are nonviolent protests. Right. You know, like you said, when they gathered weapons and stuff, I guess I'm wondering if these two biker clubs were black biker clubs what the reaction would be. You, you, you took you know, the question right, right out of my mouth. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. I promise because, you. you know, it's not the first time there's been armed protest. I mean, right. here in Atlanta, uh, we had the Palestine Solidarity um, uh, rally right. uh, last summer because of the attacks. And there were armed protesters across the street from us. And the police didn't really, didn't even, well, mess they didn't mess with us. Let, let me say something. Let me say something. Shout out to uh, the Huey P. Newton Gun Club in, oh, in yes. Texas. Oh, yes. You got a bunch of brothers and sisters that was armed. but I mean, even though they got a permit to do the march, but they were still armed. You know, sure. and they were saying... Uh, oink, oink, shoot, shoot, something like that. Oink, well, oink, shoot, shoot. well we I, I think, I think we should, <laughs> honestly, I, I'm not going to be mad at somebody who's, who's, you know, trying to take precautions or whatever. I think that we, you know, we definitely should criticize media uh, representation. Right. But I, I have a hard time uh, with what you said, Gideon, about biker clubs, people in biker clubs being inherently violent. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think that when it comes to the word gang and when it comes to, you know, when we look at even our popular media representation, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen Grease. Those right. were gangs. <clears throat> right? right, yeah. But You're see, right. But see, <laughs> they were singing gangs. They were, they were gangs. <laughs> you ever see West Side Story? Right. Most Those singing were gangs. gangs. <laughs> let me, me retort you know? briefly in reference to this because uh, my brother mentioned another concept and that is terminology. Right. In popular media, when our children came out to rebuff against these killer cops, these uh, Klan cops that have been killing our children, Tamir Rice, 12-year-old mm -hmm. Eric Garner, mm -hmm. my brother Gray, Freddie Gray. John Crawford III. I, I mean, killer cop culture. I mean, it's a killer. They right. call mm -hmm. our children thugs. thugs. They animals. They call them animals. Yes. They call them primitive. But when, but when the killer... Uh, uh, biker gangs, they say, well, these are elite uh, ex-military. They're organized. Right, right. They're oh, intelligent. Yeah. So the terminology was totally different, and the imagery of that terminology was, to, in essence, it showed ultimate respect, one killer respecting another. Right. When wow. it came to our children, <laughs> it was like these animals, animals beasts, these savages, these savages, you know cavemen. I mean? We have the so-called uh, well, I don't know what news are you watching, Gideon? I'm watching gotten... all of it, but but the, the, you have the conservative our people <laughs> among our people that when they see our children 
we have our own people calling our children yes. savages and killers like, because they're following these white Like killers. President Obama calling the folks in Baltimore thugs Thank and you. criminals. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank for you. For that back. <laughs> oh, <well, laughs> I got the Go ahead, Ralph. You know, again, we come, we have been colonialized. Thank of course. You. Yes. Of course. It's going to take Thank years you. and years, hundreds of years, hundreds of years. to get this uh, colonialism mentality out of people are minority. Please tell yeah. Brother Yanga that. Shout out to my Brother Yanga. Yanga! And, and again, when you come to bikers, mm -hmm. there are millions of bikers out there. Right. But it's just 1% of them that we're going to refer to that type of mentality. Okay. Okay. And that 1%, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to say the Bandidos and the Cossacks and a lot of more. And actually they represent when they say the 1%. Yeah, 1% okay. now they patch. But, right. but that, well, wow. A lot of people wear that one percent are not one percenters. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, but do you know? Do you know, do you know what that means? Does everybody know what the one percent means? Break that down. Man. It, the one percent uh, when they wear it. Uh, what is it? The uh, Motorcycle Association, the American no, Motorcycle it, it, Association. It, start, it started in nineteen on July the seventh, nineteen forty-seven. That was a bike event in Holliston, California. Okay. And uh, Holliston is a small town. That did have about 13 policemen, and there were thousands of bikers came into the, mm -hmm. in this town mm -hmm. from all all kind of culture. And again, being a part of society, something happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the national media guy, they showed this picture of this biker mm -hmm. sitting on the back of a bike with beer balls all around him. Right, mm -hmm. right. And the, and the police say this is not all bikers. Right. Ninety nine percent of the bikers are good people. Right. Which is true. Right. Ninety nine percent. Right. Is the one percent. One percent. We're gonna have problems with. Right. And a lot <clears> of bikers <throat> identified or wanted to identify or, or perpetrated that that one percent. Like now, they are. Now, all let, let me run something else about you. Yes, sir. When you see a one percent patch on a back, a black bike club, mm -hmm. from my perspective. They perpetrate. Yes. Oh, yes. Ouch. Ooh. Right. Right. Ooh. Okay. From my right perspective. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and and the reason I said that because again, that one percent people that are true one percenters mm -hmm. get their income from illegal sources. All right. Exactly. Right. And most of us are going to work on Monday morning. Right. Now, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me deal with that issue of one percent briefly. Okay. Because that where do we hear that one percent terminology in our communities? They with the rich? The, the rich also, but in the police community, they say, well, only 1% of the police are bad. The rest of them <laughs> are good. That's out. the biggest gang now, around. What we right. find is, if that is in fact true, just like you're saying, they're perpetrating, then you're telling me 99% of the good folks can't deal with the that 1%. 1%. That means that the 1% question. is controlling the 99%. That's As a very good know, question. So we Answer. know that the 1%, it ain't 1%, it's all of them. Okay. Because the, the I, I want to get to you. Because that 1%, even though they're bad, the 99% aren't telling on that 1%. Exactly. You know, we, we, let, let's go back to World War II. sound like a prosecutor, dude. Man, he, he, he is. is. He 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 <laughs> can we look at can we look at the Holocaust? Yes. Okay. Please. Now, what was the Holocaust? It okay. was not about Holocaust. To, from my perspective, was not about the killing of all those people yes, because sir. there are bad people in the world that would do that. Yes, the Holocaust, from my perspective, like you said, <clears throat> was those that that nine percent. That let it happen. That allowed them wow. to hold them into Auschwitz, you know Buchenheim, yep. all of those yep. crematoriums. And this is the same thing it is today. The melanated Willie had people are the majority of the planet. We've been duped into believing that we are the minority. So you've let these killers, these Europeans who this one percent, once again, like you said, the wealthy who control the minds of, through the media control the masses of our people and through the media they profiled us to hate our own selves, right. hate our children, right. yes. and look <laughs> inward to where we would destroy ourselves rather than destroy the oppressing system Preach. that is defiling us. That concept, my brother, I definitely agree with you. Okay. <clears throat> well, there we go. Sure. <laughs> your body. Oh, oh Lord uh -oh. mercy. And, 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 you know, again, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am... I, I'm a military man. I'm a Vietnam vet. Okay. I right. served in Vietnam. Yes, sir. Much now, respect. we cannot, as a minority, 
a lot of us, we cannot protest a lot of this stuff with extreme violence because we don't have enough bullets. Of course not. <laughs> we, we don't make no bullets. You know, no. uh, 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 10,000 rounds of ammunition won't last you but a day. Exactly. <laughs> make shields. <laughs> make shields. <laughs> right. make shields. Exactly. You know, uh, you know, you can have all the guns in the, in the world, but it's about bullets. It is. <laughs> right. That's a very important. Well, see, that's why our power, black, he wants to talk about the power, it's never been militarization because our power is spiritual, black, something you don't understand. <laughs> it is a power that through, once we unify, the unity and strength that comes from just us unifying alone puts fear in the entire world because we are the most powerful people on the planet. We just don't know it. Everybody else knows, knows that it. this is why they go <laughs> through so many measures, counterintelligence, intelligence quo and tell pro to keep us, to keep us suppressed mm -hmm. and to keep us thinking that we are that pig and slop rather than the powerful beautiful prince that is going to save the world through the power of spiritual on high the most high it, we just have been relegated to this position of subservience back thank, to reality thank, thank you thank you for that sermon brother right. <laughs> that. we appreciate that back to reality yeah. in the real world don't go ahead you bitch. i'm sorry Back to the 1% and the banditos. Mm -hmm. Now, the banditos, they're definitely part of the 1% because their founder, Donald Chambers, when he started the group, he was looking for the 1%. Mm -hmm. He oh. was looking for the Billy Badasses that mm -hmm. bumped the country, bumped the laws. We doing our own thing. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, okay. in that respect, I will now call the banditos a gang because that's mm -hmm. when he started, that's what he was looking for. And their their slogan or their motto is, we're the people your parents warned you about. Oh. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the baddest of the baddest. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So them banditas, they, they, right. they out there. And so to your point earlier, mm -hmm. Don, had they been all black, had it been a black back gang, mm -hmm. the numbers probably would have been reversed with 177 dead and yeah, nine, and nine, exactly. and nine in jail, hopefully nine. nine. I might be a little high with nine exactly. in jail. Yeah. Okay? It's been a massacre. And so yes. to the point of the media mm. and how they tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Their terminology. Their terminology. Um, I think I've seen one story where the anchor called them thugs. Other than that, anything I've read or them seen being on the television, biker gangs. right? Okay. Being the back gangs thugs. Other than that, anything that I've read or seen on television, they have not used the word. They use criminals well, because they are criminals. They, you know. Well, I'm gonna ask Ralphie because I mean we keep talking about the media. I don't care about the media. What I want to know is I want you to break down the whole culture of the inking. Meaning when a biker, you know, you got your tats. Oh, right, yeah. Let me give you an example. Okay. When I saw the banditos, bandito is a Spanish word for bandit. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm assuming That's it was what he wanted. Hispanic, right? Uh -huh. So now uh -huh. I'm starting to see white people in the gang, but the ones they interviewed, they had swastikas that they had to ink out. Oh, you remind you of the Aryan nation. There you go. Yeah, right. Wow. Oh. Okay. Can you break that down? I mean, what? I mean, what now, whole, now uh, let me back up. When we saw again 1% of them, we're not maybe we're not talking about numerical. We're talking about one percent as a noun to name something. That, it, it might be ten percent. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Mm -hmm. It might okay. be twenty. Okay. okay. It could might, might be twenty. <laughs> okay. You no, know, don't look at it as a, a numerical thing. It's mm -hmm. a noun. You mm -hmm. can name a noun anything. Exactly. Now, a lot of these bike clubs, the minority majority bike clubs. Came out of the mentality, oh, you said a, a racist mentality. That's mm -hmm. right. White power? Right. Uh, they sure. came out of that. <laughs> right, I'm sure. Uh, and most of us don't associate, you know, we'll, we'll see them at the at the Harley Davis dealership and talk to them, but as far as a social country, we don't associate. Right. There, there's no uh, part in with them, but there are some that would try. Right. And, and, and gain that of acceptance. Like half face. What was his name? Yeah, he, he, you know, you gain <laughs> acceptance. You know, you look at this this club that's supposed to be all power in this area. There are some of us were saying, I want you to accept me. Right. But from my military uh, perspective, 
you going to someone that don't like you, Thank you. and ask them, can I be your nigga? That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's what I said when I saw the, when I saw the bus it. driver. I was That's like, what is he doing there? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, I, and that's the interesting thing. That, that, that happens, that happens We just talking about the brother, but I'm talking about the former Aryans, white power, uh-huh. that joined the Bandidos. So you're talking about a white pride, white power, now you're going to join some Hispanics. But it's very but much the, a the part of the Bandito. The Bandito is mainly Hispanic. No, they were. But, but, okay, but, right. but it's, 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 it's not about that. He, no, he only. It's, he, it's about this. It is about right. that dog. <laughs> he, he chose the name. He chose the name. Those who haven't seen one in a while. It's about. It's not about that anymore. Right. So I mean, I must be Don, Donald Chambers chose the name Banditos because, like you said earlier, it, Mex- it represented the Mexican bandits, and he wanted that bandit. Right. Embodiment that persona. to that persona mm. to he, he wanted his club to represent that persona. So that's why he chose the name the Banditos. They were never a Hispanic club. But that right. was a but, oh, but okay. what I okay. see is that they appropriated essentially appropriated the you know a non white uh, culture for the name because if they were right. all about right. white power, all about sort of then why the Banditos? You okay. know, but a lot of a lot of English, a lot of uh, American things have been you know, assimilated from Latino That's right. stuff. But, but, you know? but, but it's, a, it's an evolution. Yeah. Initially, when all these clubs started back in the, maybe the fifties, they didn't start out to be a, a part of a criminal enterprise. Mm-hmm. Right. They had they, they had reasons to why they started that club. Most of it was, was military personal. stuff. It was like military. You said, and yeah. It was personal because of some type of pride you might have. Right. But it evolved exactly. because of money. Right. Mm-hmm. And money that could be made into something totally different. Exactly. So you cannot look at the beginnings and now and try to sometimes make that connection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, because, I mean, what, what I, I guess I'm trying to get to, okay, so the Banditos are not Hispanic. They're basically, right, no. so like, what about the Mongols? They're probably the same. They probably you, got not, some mixed people in the Mongol. You probably got, uh, there are some, some of them might have a, a black person, you know, Right, like in right. Philadelphia, you, you know the pagans. Uh, right. Like it's there in this right. area, we know the outlaws, outlaws. Mm-hmm. and 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 the hell's angels are trying to get into Florida now, and really? the hell's angels and the outlaws are competing. Oh. And again, like you said, because of territory, territory. Right. But they can't. So are you saying we're going to see, see more this territory okay. is controlled by the government? Uh-huh, the yeah. government, just like Iran Contra, under they they are rogue elements in all sectors of the government. What they're using is the, uh, their ability to traffic in drugs, prostitution, mm-hmm. gambling, and there's a cover. They are just covers for the real money and power mm-hmm. that's coming from the Washington uh, government, the seat well, of power. Uh, apparently, get in because I mean, uh, Vince just said that the uh, half face was a former detective. So mm-hmm. exactly, they so I, they have inroads the into this counterculture. Where they use them as a cover, so if they get caught, so the money still gets trafficked so, from the higher up. As if police are not involved in illegal enterprises. Okay, I, I have to agree with you in the sense that when you are getting involved in something like that, you look to the person who does it the best. Right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and piling yourself out Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Shout out to Rick Let's, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me uh, interject this into the conversation because we've talked about the banditos who most of this is surrounded. We've talked about the Cossacks, not very much because not not even the cops know a whole lot about the Cossacks. Wow. They haven't even been placed in a tier like the banditos are Pretty in new, tier yeah, two. Right. right, they're a pretty new game. Um, but I want to talk about this third game, the Waco Police Department. Okay. Yes, okay. let's exactly. talk about Let's that. talk about the Waco Police Department right. because there's a little, uh, some inaccuracies going on and the whole truth not coming out, which is known to happen with the police department, okay? Exactly. No. So, <laughs> one, <laughs> one of the witnesses, well, a couple of the witnesses that were there, that was non-biker affiliated, that were just in the restaurant, mm-hmm. said that the initial gunfight started with handguns. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. Mm-hmm. pow, pow. After the initial pow, pows, there was semi-automatic <laughs> Oh! There was semi-automatic gunfire, mm-hmm. which the witnesses said the semi-automatic gunfire did most of the shooting. Absolutely. Right. The, the Waco PD game mm-hmm. 
are the uh, they found one semi-automatic weapon which was locked in the car of one of the banditos. Huh. Mm. So the only people out there with, with semi-automatic weapons were the Waco police gang. Oh, see, right. there you go. Okay. 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 So now there is a little controversy out there because the cops are saying that all the dead gang members were killed and or shot by other gang members. Right. Of course they would. But <clears throat> Stephen Stubbs, the lawyer for the Banditos, claims that the cops killed a minimum of five people. Exactly. I believe Okay, a minimum of five people. Um, but again, the police department hasn't put out a report or anything yet because they said the ballistics and the investigation is still going on and it could take months before all this information comes back, which gives the police plenty of time right. to put in what they want to put in, say what they want to say, right. fabricate the truth, mm -hmm. and do whatever it is they well, want to do. Well, let me throw this tidbit in because it's been noised abroad that the police don't even have to report the number of people that they have killed. This is one of the things that has been uh, an issue because, right. you know, Dougie came on this show and was talking about they had to do cop watch and other organizations had to uh, actually essentially take up the responsibility of reporting the number of police killings. I actually read that last week, wow. so you're right. So when we talk about this issue, see, ballistics, as you mentioned, <laughs> right. CSI, and the, the, the most, one of the most popular programs on TV, True. has the ability through scientific evidence to prove what shot and what right. a bullet came from what from where, right. very true. so they very obviously true. don't want the truth to come out true. because Good once again you. you got these killer biker gangs that are well armed now they did put out the report that they confiscated over a thousand weapons, weapons. which some were hidden in potato chip bags some were hidden throughout the restaurant but it's a family club game come on now so <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> what they don't want to happen Set up. right they don't want these gangs to somehow become affiliated with our oppressed position ex-military and then began to have a military force, which you always say we need right. as a buffer against white supremacy. So the reason why they have the biker gangs fighting internally is to keep that force and allowing them to parcel out territory is to keep them fighting amongst themselves like they do Wait. our people versus coming under some type of real cause to help to liberate the Get people. Get hold that thought. Now... Ralphie, you just said the setup. Yes, sir. But it, right. uh, if you know the black cu uh, black culture, and I don't know that culture just just by what I read and what I see. Right. If am I going to go into the <clears throat> territory of my enemy? You know that my enemy. No, sir. Right. Okay, yeah. I might meet them on some neutral ground. Neutral ground. Right. 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 I'm not right. coming to your house. Always. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. Okay, that that's makes why I'm saying it's a setup. Yeah. Well, right. 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 well totally. it wasn't necessarily the banditos house like i said earlier this was the texas Wait, confederation of clubs and independence which is the regional biker club coalition so it was a a, a number of biker clubs from a, that region okay but so so many times like you have they turn a bike week and, and street right this, and i've been all right. those places mm -hmm. they don't allow you to wear colors mm. and they don't and and they don't even allow you to use the word mc okay. because it can cause problems you know, when those clubs get together and they're my sworn enemy, mm -hmm. when they're lying and the hyena meet up in the jungle, <laughs> right. the same mentality. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. I do not show that I'm a hyena. You don't right. show up alone. So I might can talk to you. Exactly. I can, I can be in a social situation with you. Exactly. But wow. if I know you're my enemy, right. you know, you it's going to be war. It got to be, it gotta be right. war. Right. And, and and that's not necessarily a good thing. Right. No, but that's reality. Right. <laughs> well, okay. My, my thing with the banditos is, I, on almost every story I've heard, there's a family member, a friend, or someone crying. We're not a gang. Mm -hmm. They're not criminals. Mm -hmm. They're not this. Mm -hmm. But the founder of the banditos. Donald Chambers, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but he was in jail serving two life sentences hmm. oh, for murdering no. for back in the 70, late 70s, early 80s. 
for murdering two Mexican drug dealers. Hmm. Not only did he murder them, he made them dig their graves. Oh, wow. Put them in the grave, set them on fire, mm. oh. and then buried them. Oh. So, th you know, all of this talk about... Savages. Eh, savages, right. <laughs> and so, when I first heard the story, Bandidos, Cossacks, Waco Police Department, my first thought was, okay, the cops are really trying to point all the fingers at the the biker gangs mm -hmm. like they do with everybody else right claiming no culpability right but then once i start researching these banditos and i'm like oh lord have mercy mm -hmm. these guys are really serious and i haven't seen i don't know much about banker gang biker gangs except for what i saw on tv the sons of anarchy i'm, I'm sure you heard of sons of anarchy cross five straight <laughs> 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 that's my show though you know what i mean but that's how i learned about the ink yeah that's oh, and, okay. and, and from my research i found that the show the sons of anarchy was based on a book written by an author named thompson who based his book on the hell's angels mm. uh. right right you know what i mean so all of this is based in something some type of reality you know what i mean some type of reality and it's come from because a lot of and the it's funny cause a lot of real biker game called the sons of silence really okay yeah, yeah. but a lot of the bikers were saying we're getting a bad rap our reputation in our club because of what people have seen on TV, the Sons of Anarchy. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? And they're saying we're nothing like that. And this is coming from a bandito. And well, once I really researched the banditos, I'm like, bruh, how you going to sit there and say <laughs> <laughs> that you're not you know, doing this? So we're coming down to the yeah. end of the yeah. show. I, I just want to thank Ralphie. I mean, I have so much respect. Thank you, sir. For, thank you. Uh, people who've been to Vietnam. I mean, this government, uh, they, they, put Agent Orange on their own people. We know there were flacking going on. Fracking, fracking. Exactly. Okay. Fracking. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> Fracking is killing citizens. Well, know that. I'm, I'm right. I'm with you okay. age-wise. I mean, I'm yeah. just about there. So I just, again, much respect. You still look good to have come through that. The most high obviously <laughs> okay. is with you. And well, thank you for being in the arena. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to, you know, get the word out that, again, as far as the bikers are concerned, it's a segment of the population that like any segment of the population. Right. Yes, like, so like it's going to have good, bad, and ugly. You're yeah. going to have the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're going to have lawyers, judges, policemen, everything, and you're going to have criminals, too. Right. So let me ask you this, Ralph, and this is going to be my last question. Because they are their own subculture. Yeah. And I'd like to bring up something. Okay. Um, so you, do you predict violence between the Hells Angels and Outlaws in Florida? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, said, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so uh, when we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, the largest gang, uh, the Waco PD, um, I was watching a, uh, something on USA Today, a couple, uh, a biker couple that had been one of the 177 people right. incarcerated. Right. And apparently they had just shown up to uh you know the, the event. twin peaks yes yeah, so, yeah, to, to wrong twin peaks. Place. yeah and that's what and that's what the, mm. that's what happened um the female part of the couple her her experience was that she was one of the few women in that space and so the police you know basically they you know she was saying oh my god they threw me down they did this and they searched me in front of the men mm. which is interesting because when I was watching this, I was just like, wow, you know, a lot of black people actually go through this on a regular right, basis. Right, exactly. right. And, you know, and here's this, you know, they're just like, we're not criminals, we're not criminals. And I feel like this predominantly white biker gang is, is, has been put in a similar position, not quite that similar. Not, not yeah, yeah. But, I got you. But feel close you. enough. Right. You know, that, you know, mirrors a lot of what, you know, perceived black gangs, black people go through on a daily basis. Even even the protest today, to your point, the protest in front of the courthouse today was to protest the mass incarceration mm -hmm. of these 177 oh, bikers. No. <laughs> they did not say <laughs> that. They, they said mass incarceration of 177 oh. bikers who were mainly oh. arrested unjustly because they said the cops just, they didn't know who did what, so they yeah. just did a sweep right, right, and yeah. gathered up everybody and you're right. going and down. And they're you innocent know what I mean? and they did not feel that they had to pay anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. And go well, ahead, Ralph. Never get your information from one source. You right about that. Right. You know, You're right about if, that. If, especially if, if in you the U.S. Go on the net and read a story that happened in America, a uh, German newspaper. It's totally different. It's totally different. Yeah, so, yeah I read a lot so of you UK stuff. You get your perspective from a lot of sources. And yeah. You go from there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. That's advice You're right. for you. Shout Ava? out. Look. Yeah. Shout out to the Guardian over there in London. Oh, definitely. I see you. They do a lot of they they. 
uh, tell a lot of American stories. Shout out to the Real News. Shout out to Mumia. And shout out to Amy Goodman and Democracy Now. Yes. Free Mumia. I think, yes. I think we got about three minutes left. We want to do some closings. Yes. Closing statements. Table. Go ahead, Black. We're going to start with you. No, no, don't start with me. Start with I just I just want to say that again, most bikers, the common goal of what we have in common is bikes themselves. Right. right. Mm. Okay. Right. We got interest in everything in the world that anyone else has interest. Right. Tony Morrison. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, right. Yes. Okay. Right. So our interests are not just totally on this one on thing, bikers and but we ride okay. bikes because we enjoy them. It's a stress reliever, and we're going to continue to do this, and we try to change our image that you can see on mass media. Okay, okay. <laughs> Appreciate you, Ralphie. Mm -hmm. Don? Well, I, I now I'm going to offer a, a formal request for bikers for Toni Morrison. I think that would be awesome. Um, it's, we were talking about the fact that Ralph likes Toni Morrison. Um, I, I just, in my initial reaction to, you know, the Waco, uh, this melee here, was that, oh, you know, they're treating the, the white bikers differently than they would treat, you know, black people. But then the more and more I hear about people being detained, bail being high and whatever, it's something that we definitely need to watch. I feel like the, even the term biker gang or right. club, we have to start reevaluating how we use gang and what that right. means. Uh, free Shakata Shakur, <laughs> let her come back to the city. She represents oh. the real sister in our community. We're out. All right, we out. Man, Please. appreciate y'all for tuning in to the arena. We out, here. You took us out. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean